Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Eastward. We were finally able to make it up to the Forbidden Land using the elevator lift from the dig site, and now we are in the Forbidden Ruins. We've got uh, to rescue Sam. She made it up here with out us knowing, and so now we have to go and rescue her. Hopefully you're all doing well. This is kind of the extension of the dig site ruins, I guess, or the dig site, whatever you want to call it, dungeon. Um, that's kind of that. All right. So here's our first, oops. <laughs> Not how you're supposed to do that. Uh, here's our first attempt to use our upgraded pot, pan, whatever you want to call it. To solve puzzles. So there you go. You can now launch bombs across gaps. Blow up. No, I went. Ooh, I thought that was gonna electrocute me. Get that salt. I would have been salty if I didn't get that. <laughs> See what I did? Okay. Anyway. Yeah, so this is kind of like the first um the first true dungeon of the game. Which will culminate with some pretty crazy action. I know that this first part of the game, the prologue and the beginning of this first chapter, aren't terribly exciting. There's a lot of exposition involved in scene setting. So I can totally understand if this isn't quite your uh, shindig, but I can promise you this, today's episode and the next episode will be action paked. So there will definitely be Plenty to enjoy here. Right, this like, is this a little bit of a puzzle? Let's go ahead and do that. Looks like that goes to this. And that. And that. Success? Do we need to hit a button, maybe? Turn on. If only it was that simple. All right. The world would be a better place. So we haven't really seen too many new enemies so far. Um, there was kind of those pincher bugs. Those are new. Oops, thought I killed this thing. You will want to be careful. Ooh, found a potato, that's nice. Um, you will want to be careful though, when it comes to um, your hearts, your life in general. It can be a little difficult from time to time to Heal yourself. The game isn't super generous, especially when you get further. Excuse you. I say that as I take a ton of damage. As you get further into dungeons, the game isn't super generous. So just be mindful of that. Looks like there is a hidden chest out here. Always be hunting for that. Oh, yeah, how salty. We don't have anything we can use our salt on yet, but in the future, we'll be able to buy foodstuffs and upgrades, all kinds of doodads. What is going on here? There we go. Moving right along. This is a nice kind of set piece of, uh, you know, it's called the Ancient Ruins. Looks like it's an old shopping mall, perhaps. Department store. Supermarket, any of those, which is weird that this is where they chose to build the mine underneath it, but I'm sure they weren't really taking too much of that into consideration when they were developing this area. But there isn't really much, I guess, new compared to what we've already been doing. This is just kind of a, oh boy, oh boy. This is just to kind of give you a little bit of a a gut check and say, have you been paying attention, you know? Can you figure out, oh, I didn't even swing. Can you figure out the things that you've been asked to do the entire time? And when it comes to hearts, it does appear that the slugs are more generous with dropping those, which is nice. All right, is, ooh, there's a magazine here. Let's inspect it. All right, Earthborn Manga, or Manga, or however you say it. How do you say it, viewers? 
I never knew. I have friends who are really into those. I think those are like the, um, kind of like Japanese comics, a little bit like, um, like anime in written form. I believe that's what it is. And I've read those from time to time. I think that the way that they're written is you have to read them from right to left, which is a little confusing if you're not super familiar with that culture. All right, here we go. This is one of those new enemies. This is that kind of pit. Pincher bug. Also, we have these caterpies dropping down from the ceiling. You can see where they are with their shadows. It's kind of a nice little tell. Let's see. Looks like the pincher bugs take three hits to dispatch. But yeah, this is the first real dungeon of the game. And it does. Oop. Okay, I talked about what that was and I completely ignored it in the very next sentence. What does that say? Bibbin. Can we pull this apart? Does this lead to anything? It looks like there might be something behind it. Always be checking these little areas, especially with bookshelves. That's kind of one of the frequent gimmicks that this game has. Dragging chests, bookshelves, any sort of collateral in the way is probably blocking some sort of a treasure. 50 salt, more treasure, we love that. Let's see if there's anything in these lockers. I always remember how frustrating it was as a kid where you were given a locker to store your, your doodads, right, when you're in like grade school. Oh, what is this? Steam peppercorn? Who knew? All right, we're gonna be careful here and not, not run into this. Sometimes it just kind of helps to hack and slash your way through these areas, especially early. The game itself doesn't give you any method of dispatching foes except for the pot. So a pan, it's technically a frying pan, but whatever. You need to be pretty mindful of that. So don't get too crazy. I don't know if there's anything over here or not. Can we check the trash? No. So you just gotta be careful. You only have four hearts. And the game, like I said, is not super generous with regen. Oops, looks like we're missing a key. Key required. All right, let's go find that key. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Yeah, just take your time. Um, it's you know, very easy just to kind of hack and slash just based on um, what you have going for you. Like you only have the pot, so there's not really a ton that you can do to deal damage besides that. So you just got to kind of make do. It's not a bad option, of course. All right, I don't think we've been this way yet. Have we been this way? I don't know. I'm gonna absolutely get lost like a billion times in this one. Is this the key? Mushrooms. Are we secretly playing The Last of Us? Okay. What a great game, one and two. Hopefully you all enjoyed the show variety version. It was wonderful. I've noticed that as I get older that I'm like less inclined to want to watch television. I find myself spending more of my free time the little bit that I get adulthood yay um I find myself spending more of my free time just kind of watching other content that's made by creators on the YouTubes was I supposed to go it looks like I need to move that oh um, get out of here I need to move that shelf but getting into that room I'm not sure how to do that yeah, this is one of the things that's annoying. I'm not 100% sure what the hitbox is of those snake plants. So. Is this a door? Is this hiding anything? It is not. All right. Um, I do need to move this at some point, though. I think I probably have to come from the top. And move that to the side. That's my guess. Also, these snake plants regenerate super quickly, which is a bit of a butt. 
And also while you're swinging, if you're in the range of the other ones, they will attack you. So super not cool. I'm trying not to be too conservative with my items, but I'm not entirely sure the next time I'm going to get bombs. So I don't really want to go ham yet. That's a little sneaky alcove. More tokens. We'll use those later, of course. We'll go Pixball crazy to conclude the game. Ooh, is this what I think it is? Oh, yeah, it's Ducky. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I don't know how I get over there exactly. I am going to do my best to try and navigate to that space. I know that you can get over there, but that's one of the tricky things about playing through this game is um, it's not always clear how to get to the spaces you want to get to. I feel like this is... Somewhere later where I'm going to have to come a different direction and approach it from the top side, like I mentioned before. But we do have the key now. We are equipped. What is this? Zelda? Ha! <laughs> okay. So we can just zoom on past. It's also really enjoyable just to kind of look at the set design here. There's a lot of really great pixel art in a game like this. So that's one of the things that I feel like they did super well is, um, oh my, I'm just getting absolute crushed right now, is um, the aesthetics of this game. I know that it's really popular nowadays to make games that are um, kind of pixel art driven. It's like one of the, I don't wanna say a trope, because that diminishes the quality of the work that's being done, which is not fair, and I would not do that to these artists, but... Heart Orb. Heart Piece. A la Zelda. Good for us, anyway. Um, yeah, I know pixel art has kind of been one of the more common varieties of art design. And I think that it's really nice. There's a lot of games that I feel could probably benefit from something like this. I know that the whole HD 2D thing has been really popular, like your uh, Octopaths and your Triangle Strategies, although those are made by the same development group, so I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? All right. Um, well, this looks a little precarious. Can we just walk through this? I guess. Okay. This looks like... The, is this... Are we pushing or pulling here? Oops. Give me one gosh dang second. Oh. Okay, well I guess that works. That really sucks. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah, this game, for all of its quirkiness, it does have plenty of faults, and I'm not gonna be the person to drown, drone on about those as I'm playing because I'm not here to do, to make an indictment of this game. I'm just here to enjoy it and play it to the mediocreist of my abilities, of course, as I do. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can scoot a bomb across this gap here. Let's see. Looks pretty good. Yeah, boy. Oh, I can't get that salt, though. That makes me salty. Interact. Okay, now it sucks. Boop. Oh, it's like blocked by the... Okay. Huh. I think I can go against the stream, maybe? No. I want to be careful, though. I don't want to get fully absorbed into the area here now. Oh, I see. I was getting confused. The perspective of some of the some of the set pieces in this game is a little confusing. This is supposed to be parallel to the vents that are sucking you forward. It's a little confusing with the way that it, it is structured. At least to me. Uh oh. Oh no! Mini boss. Yeah. So here's your first uh, mini boss of this dungeon. It is just a bunch of these things. Pretty uh, crazy. If you are careful, you can just kind of move around and kite them to your direction and 
There you go. I do really enjoy the mini boss music though, it's good. Blap, got him. See, this all comes to you when you're that close to it, but... Apparently the game does not want to be kind to me. But yes, hopefully you're enjoying this series. If you are, uh, consider liking the video, commenting on your thoughts, and subscribing. Always appreciated. All of the above. Ooh, replenishing my bombs. Very nice. Yeah, this is one of those parts of the game that does have a decent amount of action. So hopefully you're all enjoying that. Like I was saying before, can definitely understand that the early goings of this game, as some games are, has a propensity to be pretty dry. And if you're not super into RPGs, in this case, you know, it's there's the trope of like the JRPG. This is more of an action RPG at least. So we have that going for us. The only downside is that when there is an action, it just kind of falls a little short. My self-preservation is not good enough. What are we doing? Every time I get hearts, I wind up just immediately giving them right back. Okay, there we go. Huh. How am I doing this? I bet I can blow up that pillar if I bomb it just the right way. Oops. It's not close enough. Let's try that again. Bloop. That might do it. Yes. It's a good thing that they sort of briefly teach you that blowing up set pieces is an effective method of progression, because without that, you would never know that. All right, there we go. I'm gonna be a little more careful here, of course. We're progressing just fine, but this game is a little unforgiving, even, you know, early. This is the first dungeon of the game, and it does have some tricks up its sleeve. I mean, you'll see. It's still, it's still tutorial land, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but this game can be a little more difficult than some. All right, gear part, very nice. We'll use those eventually to upgrade our equipment, obviously. Makes sense, doesn't it? All right. So it looks like we need to blow up this pillar as well. And that creates this turd pile so we can go forward. Okay, so as I was saying before, um, now we can go this way. That's what I figured would happen. Obstacles will temporarily be in your way and then you can make your way through when you clear it out. Very nice. Okay, what do we got going on here? This looks like a generator of sorts. Electricity. Okay. So in order to get around this area, there's a lot of wires that need connected and we need to figure out if we want to go south or if we want to go north. That I do not know, but this seems like this is the easiest connection we can make first. Uh, okay, that looks kind of haunting. I don't want to do that, so let's hold off on that for now and see. Oh, it looks like there's a third door we can go to. All right. Let's not get ahead of ourselves too much, viewers. All right. Does moving this do anything? Looks like there's a poster on the wall of somebody who's important to someone. Okay, so now we've unlocked the door south. I don't know, honestly, which way is the best way to go yet, but... Okay, does this just loop us back around to the beginning? I think that's what this might be. Let's see. Maybe be careful here. I don't want to goose any hearts if I'm getting to an area where I'm going to need them. Oh, yeah. Get out of my way. I got no slugs on me. Got no slugs on me. Oh, my gosh. There's so many. There may be slugs on some of your mugs, but there's a ton of slugs on me. Oh, boy. This is bad. Give me some hearts, you jerks. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know if I've been this way or not. Looks like this might be like a little spot that I've already... Yes, okay. I've already been this way. So that was fun and a waste of two hearts. I love that the things I say a lot of the time feel like self-fulfilling prophecies. 
I'm like, oh yeah, don't waste your hearts as I go and I waste my hearts. Super cool. My controller is rumbling very aggressively. Okay, so I think that I need to find a way to connect. this with the other side, maybe? I'm not 100% sure what that does. Okay, looks like that feeds power to that. And that's getting power to both sides? This looks ominous. What could go wrong? Maybe we drop a bomb in front of it? Hmm. We opened the door and I thought, oh, okay, we don't have power to this side. Well, how do we do this? What a conundrum. Well, that worked. Uh-oh. Something sounds really bad. Oh, no. It, uh... It seems like we have made a very poor choice. But we have to go investigate, of course. But well, whatever was there is not there anymore. Oh boy. All right, well. Whatever that is, we're going to be careful. There was the glowing red eye hiding amongst that poo pile. But it does look like we're getting closer to being above ground, which is nice. Some daylight streaming through. It is very cathartic to just go through and bash crates as you're taking enemies out. All right, let's be let's be more careful out here. Would love a heart drop or two. Oh, never mind, we're full. Ah, I didn't know that. Don't forget to explore the whole area, of course. Let's see what happens when we kick a bomb into these jerks. Oh, they took out three and one. That's pretty good. Good return on investment. All right. Once again, I don't know where I'm going at all, so. Okay, looks like that's more of a puzzle, so we don't really want to head that way yet. And now I have to be careful because I wasted that bomb. It's one of the downsides to the enemies in this game is they respawn incredibly quickly, especially the moment you leave off screen. So if you had hopes that you'd be able to progress unencumbered by these enemies. Shouldn't have said unencumbered, probably unhindered would be a better word. All right, quick treasure chest grab, another gear part. Make sure you grab those, you're gonna want those for later. Oops. Upgrading your, your kit, your whatchamacallits is imperative to a successful eastward adventure, of course, as any RPG would have you believe. And the items in this game are goofy, we'll say that. Goofy and uh varying degrees of usefulness, we'll say we'll we'll say that. That's how I'll qualify. Because I'm not entirely sure what people's opinions are, but you know, subjectively I would say that some of the items in this game, maybe I just wasn't using them correctly. I don't know, but it can be a little tricky from time to time to really get the hang of the accessories. We'll say that. I don't think these move or go anywhere. As far as I know, I think I, I think I swept through this entire area pretty well. Now I got to deal with these doofuses again. It is nice though, for some reason, the uh, enemies will give you food drops. You know, we've seen these peppercorns. There's an egg. I think we got a sand root too, so. All right, looks like we've got another electricity switch puzzle. We're back to the dungeon music from before. We gotta make sure we clear out all of these spots. That way we can progress. I think there might be a bomb dispenser up here. Nope. But there is a bomb. Oh, bombs replenished. And by that, it means one. Very generous game. Thank you. Mad respect. Okay, let's see what this 
goes to. Looks like this goes wraps around, bringing around town. Okay, cool. Any bombs in here? Very nice. Yeah, when it says bombs replenish, it is being very literal and referring to it just being one. So don't get your little hearts up. Ho hearts? Don't get. Don't let your little heart get your hope. I don't know. I'm trying to make statements that don't really align. Okay. Um, let's disconnect this one. We need the power to route here. Sometimes when I do these types of puzzles, I literally just, um, I literally just wing it. And I just keep hitting buttons until I get where I'm trying to go. And that might've been exactly what I just did. But you'll never know, viewers. You'll never know. All right. It's like another key item here. Nope, just more shrooms. To hallucinate your day away. All right, this looks like another extension of the blow and suck puzzle that we've already done. I'm gonna try to get as much of this done today in this episode, so that way you all will get your fill of the actions. I know that, like I said a couple of times already, is that this isn't always necessarily the craziest, most exciting, um, playthrough and so I'm trying to rectify that a little bit I'm surprised that he was able to make it through that is there anything up here at all does not appear to be so but we made it through that's what matters yeah sometimes the action in this one can be a little skimpy like a short dress this appears to be a vending machine so we can buy an energy drink and I believe we are paying with salt which, oh, it's a salt shaker. At first, I couldn't tell what that was. There's an ammo pack. We don't have anything to use that for, but that's a little bit of a, I would say, um, spoiler. So that's kind of not cool that they put that there. Um, how much health do we get from the hot dog? I don't know. Let's check it out. Where's our pack? There it is. The first thing. Two hearts. Okay. Well, I don't know if we necessarily really needed that, but um, we'll go with the hot dog for now and then maybe we'll have to come back here later. But anyway, we can save. Thanks, little existentialism. Okay, so that's a pretty good uh, place to stop. I think the game actually intends you to because they put this here. Um, yeah, and if you need to cook, you can also cook some food. So I'll show that off later. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Eastward, and I will see you next time. Bye.